Hey everyone, so today's the day we finally say goodbye to this. My trusty Solar Eye Boost, because we've replaced it with Eddie. Okay, so today's the day we finally say goodbye to the Solar Eye Boost because we've replaced it with our Eddie unit. Now, um, this Solar Eye Boost, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, in fact, this has been a really, really good uh, buy. Uh, when we got our solar panels fitted about four years ago, we had this Solar Eye Boost installed at the same time. Now, what the Solar Eye Boost does, for those of you who don't know, is it uh, redirects electricity to the immersion heater when you're generating surplus electricity from your uh, solar array. Now, the clever thing about the Solar Eye Boost and others like it, you can get the Emerson and the Eddy, um, is that it doesn't just turn on the immersion heater at full whack, whatever, you know, they, you know if you've got a full four kilowatt immersion heater, it doesn't just, you know, power it on. Um, it actually regulates the amount of electricity being supplied into it. So if you're generating 0.5 of a kilowatt um, of surplus electricity, it will put 0.5 of a kilowatt uh, of electricity in. So you're just using the excess to heat up your hot water tank um, uh, rather than using your gas. Now in summer, this works fantastically. The sun rises at 5 a.m. and by the time you're getting up, um, you've got a full uh, hot water tank full of uh, hot water um, and the boiler barely comes on. Um, so our gas usage um, just drops off a cliff through the summer months. So you can see our, uh, uh, our usage sort of drop down and then come back up as the, uh, as the, as the winter comes in. So it's a really, really good, uh, uh, good buy. Um, we've saved many, many kilowatts um, of gas. Um, so I, I really like it. Now, obviously we've got the, uh, the EV now, which has got a Zappi and we've got the Harvey and we've got the hub and we've got the app. So I thought it made sense to buy the Eddy, which is my energy's version of this. Now it's at, compared to this, it's actually a bit of a beast. Um, uh, this is mostly plastic and, uh, uh, and and obviously there's some electronics inside. The Eddy is a, is a metal box, it's got a massive heat sink on the back of it um, uh, and uh, it looks very well constructed, let's put it that way. Um, but actually fitting it is a fairly straightforward affair provided you've already got an immersion heater. So we ha hadn't uh, when when we uh, originally had the solar panels installed we didn't have an immersion heater so uh, the electrician as well as fitting this had to fit the full circuit right the way back to the consumer unit because uh, an immersion heater needs a dedicated cable it's a bit like an oven um, it needs uh, it doesn't need a big cable but it needs a dedicated breaker on the um, on the consumer unit so um, if you don't have one already um, that can be a problem. It means you, you know, you have to do a bit of extra work to get one of these things fitted. Um, if you have a combi boiler as well, um, you know, you, you can't benefit from these uh, because you, you won't have a, a, a hot water tank. Um, so we have what's called a system uh, boiler. So we have a, a, a hot water tank and a and a and a, and a, um, a gas boiler. Um, the gas boiler heats up the the, the hot water tank, um, and uh, that supplies heat uh, to showers and taps as well as the radiators um, so you have to have a hot water tank basically duh um, but a lot of new homes or a lot of homes which have had combi boilers fitted there was a big fad of doing that um, the hot water tanks are, are are removed as part of that process which obviously is great from an airing cupboard space point of view but it's not great from a storage energy storage point of view because you're essentially with a combi boiler you're um, creating the hot water at the point of use so um, not so much use for uh, one of these uh, devices unless you want to put a tank back in and, and and just use it purely for that but that wouldn't be very practical so um, where you have it, it's a really good thing. So we've got one, so let's um, let's get into um, the fitting of the Eddy. Um, it was a pretty straightforward process. 
Now, I've had a little look at this before, so not a true first unboxing, but uh, we've got a box, uh, a bag of screws um, and an SMA uh, connected uh, antenna. And then the eddy unit itself in a bag. Going to quickly grab a screwdriver. The planning that goes into these videos. Okay, so here you have the main eddy unit um, uh, exposed in all its glory. Uh, here are the uh, terminals for the heaters. So you've got heater one, heater two, that's the live. And then you've got the neutral for heater one and heater two, and then the earths for heater one and heater two. Um, and then over on this side, you've got the live, neutral, and uh, earth for the supply uh, from your dedicated uh, supply uh, spur. Um, and then at the top, You've got the SMA connector for the antenna uh, for it to communicate with the rest of the other My Energy devices. Then, if we just do this, the whole thing lifts away, leaving the bracket uh, for installation onto the wall. And then on the back here, you can see this enormous heat sink. Um, and this is something, this is a very, very different design to the Solar iBoost. Um, so this thing is obviously designed um, to dissipate quite a substantial amount of heat. Um, so interesting that the unit generates so much heat that it needs that, but um, obviously one thing that isn't here um, is any kind of fan arrangement. So there's no active cooling um, on this device. So all of the cooling for these components uh, on the front here um, will be achieved by this passive heatsink. So that's probably the reason why um, it's so large um, because they're trying to keep it maintenance free. Most things that fail in electronic components tend to be things like fans. So if you can eliminate them from your design, you're, um, you're onto a winner uh, in most cases. Right, let's get it on the wall. Okay, so welcome to the airing cupboard. Um, no, I didn't make that hole in the wall. I, I don't know why that's there. Um, I've now put three uh, uh, drywall fixings into this wall. Um, which are each capable of carrying 25 kilograms, so there's going to be no problem uh, with it holding the um, the eddy. Um, the really nice thing about the eddy is it comes with this bracket, um, so it makes installation really really easy. It also makes lining up the and leveling the bracket before installation really really easy too. Um, so you can just literally put this on the wall, mark up with a pen pencil, uh, and then drill your holes, put your fixings in and then put that all to the wall, make sure it's really level and then you're, you're good to go. Um, unlike unlike the uh, iBoost that we're replacing where it was all in one unit so you had to kind of sort of put it on the wall and then look down and, and, and get the fixings in the right place. Um, but um, obviously that was a, a much smaller, lighter unit anyway so it was more possible. I think if I'd had to do that with the Eddy I'd have been swearing a little bit because it's a big heavy unit and um, not the sort of thing you want to be wrestling with uh, on the wall, so we just level that up. Right, so that's now ready, uh, ready for ready. Um, it's got these hooks at the top, um, which take all of the weight of the eddy whilst you're popping it on. Um, this is the mains cable, um, dedicated feed uh, from the consume unit, which has been isolated. Um, currently for this installation. Now the brackets on the wall you can see that it's got these um, uh, hangers on the top and then screws at the bottom. So the screws are still in, they're just sitting a bit proud. Um, what will happen is the hangers will go through these holes here at, at both sides on the top and then the screws through there and then it will all sort of slot down uh, into place. What we can do at this stage as well is just feed the wires through
And there you go, that's on the wall. Uh, one of the things I really like about this uh, unit are these retaining uh, clamps for the, uh, for the wiring. They're really, really chunky. Um, and once they're screwed down, they, you know, they're not going anywhere. Um, so what we can do now is just pop the screws in. And we can also pop the antenna on. Um, now we're ready to wire the unit in. Now, if you are going to do any electrical work yourself, then you should talk to an electrician about getting um, the electrical work that you do signed off by a professional. That allows uh, uh, your house to have all of the electrical certificates that it should do. That's something that I um, always have done whenever I'm doing any electrical work. As far as the insulation goes, actually wiring it in is no diff more difficult than wiring any other um, electrical circuit in a house. Uh, simple twin and earth on one side and then um, in this case the, the cable for the immersion heater is a stranded cable uh, so it's best to twist that round uh, and even solder it um, uh, before installing. So let's get it wired in. Right, so that's the main supply, nice and tight, um, with its retaining clip there, uh, which is keeping that cable nice and fast uh, in place. Next thing to do is wire up the immersion heater. Um, we've only got one immersion heater in this uh, installation, so um, we won't need the uh, H2. Uh, now, in the iBoost, the uh, cables are a slightly different length because the positions uh, of the cables in the actual iBoost unit meant that they ran uh, like that. They're a lot closer together in this unit so I think I'm just going to redo these cable ends uh, just to make them uh, a little bit more even. Right, so that's the ends cleaned up, um, and they're nice and even now, uh, or as even as they need to be to get to the different uh, terminals on there. Um, so now what we can do is we can feed them up through the back uh, and connect them in too. Now one of the things I will say at this point um, is that I actually think the immersion heater wire especially should be coming out of the bottom here um, because you can see that actually the immersion heater wire going down to the immersion heater is resting on this metal um, here. Now, it's not sharp but it would just be a neater um, it would just be neater in my mind if the uh, wires came straight down and perhaps had the uh, had a rubber grommet round the uh, round the metalwork there, but what you can see is that the metal is lipped over, um, so it is actually rounded. Um, so they have thought about uh, cable chafing uh, on the uh, on that there, but the cable is still resting uh, beyond the point at which it's being secured. Um, so you could get people or things in and out of the air and cupboard that that, that moves this cable. Um, so I'd rather there have been a circular hole in the bottom. Um, and it passed out through uh, through the base there, but you know that's just my opinion. Right, so that's that installed. Um, now all we need to do is put the cover on, um, which just simply slots on, and then there's two screws to secure it in place. Now, unlike the rear, there's no actual hanger, so although it slots in it might fall off if you don't just pop a top screw in. Okay, now with the top cover on, um, we need to turn the isolator back on, and then we actually need to turn the unit on as well. Uh, it's got a three-way rocker switch on the bottom, um, which is good, because there's actually a bypass feature. So if you do rely on your immersion heater quite a bit, um, then you can actually just flick it into bypass and it will just run the immersion heater normally. 
Um, it's currently off, so we'll switch it on. Um, it'll then load up, and we should uh, then need to um, pair it with the Zappy unit, and then we should um, be good to go. Now the only real comment I have about that whole pairing process was that um, I was expecting to pair it with the Zappi and then the Zappi uh, give all of the information to the Eddy. Um, and there may be a problem with the way I've got my system configured here um, because although I have the hub, the, the um, Harvey is currently paired, um, uh, not paired with the hub. Um, so I don't know if that's the issue but I had to pair the Harvey separately. Um, so even though I paired it with a Zappi, um, I needed to pair it with Harvey as well. So it's a little bit more uh, of an involved process than I thought there. But um, other than that, um, a fairly straightforward process. Um, so no, no, real, uh, no real hassles there. Right, well now it's all paired up. Um, you can see the um, uh, unit is now um, putting some energy into the immersion heater. It's only putting 0.3 of a kilowatt in at the moment. Um, we're generating uh, 1.9 uh, kilowatts, uh, but the house is consuming uh, 1.5. Um, so the, the surplus energy um, is just trickling down into the immersion heater. So we shall see how this goes. Um, let's go and have a look at the app because this is the real reason that we switched from the Solar Eye Boost to the uh, Eddy because it's then within the My Energy app and we can see uh, where the energy is going. We've got a bit more control around how we use um, that energy. So let's go and check that out now. Okay, so you can see that in the My Energy app we've now got an extra icon for the immersion heater for the Eddy. Uh, you can see we're currently generating 1.1 uh, kilowatts from the solar and we're drawing 2 kilowatts in from the grid. Now if we go into the eddy we can see that we've got some settings here. Now obviously if you've got uh, two immersion heaters um, you can select them by going tank 1 and tank 2 uh, and then you've got some functions around manual timing um, so you can boost manually uh, from uh, one to four hours. Then you can go into the time section. This is all very similar to how the uh, Zappi is uh, set up. So here you could actually take advantage of the same uh, low rate tariffs that we're working um, using the Zappi. So between half past midnight and half past four in the morning, we could actually set the eddy to put some uh, electricity into the hot water tank. Um, but uh, we're not going to... Uh, uh, do that at the moment. Uh, one thing that's um, one thing that's noticeable by its absence is any kind of prioritization between Eddie and Zappi. So I'm a little bit disappointed about that. Um, but um, hopefully, hopefully uh, that feature might be added soon. So that's it really. So now you can see that uh, the house has um, reduced its consumption, um, and now any surplus uh, energy is now being diverted into the Eddie unit. So we've got 0.6 kilowatts going in there. So it's all very straightforward. One thing I have noticed is I've lost my graphs again. Um, so if I go into the charts here they're all blank. Um, that seems to have been since I um, uh, tidied up the Harvey and uh, installed the Eddy so I'm not sure why uh, that's the case. And there you go. You can hear the uh, immersion heater running there. Well hopefully you can. Um, because it is. Um, so that's the Eddy uh, installed. Um, overall, am I impressed? Well, um, I'm a little bit disappointed that there's no more controls around prioritizing between Zappi and Eddy. Um, I'd really like to have seen that in the app, but just being able to see the uh, hot water um, statistics on the app is a, is a good thing. 
Um, so I am going to get some benefit out of it. Was it worth it? I think that's a more difficult um, case. So I'm, I'm not, you know, in any way affiliated with my energy. So I did pay full price for this um, from this product, um, and ultimately, you know, it, 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 if you've already got a solar eye boost or something like that, um, unless you're a bit of a tech geek like me, then there's not really any point in upgrading. Um, I don't think, not at this stage anyway. Um, but um, I'm kind of glad I did because I have got everything in one place. So from a convenience factor, um, there is some more. There are some advantages. So um, obviously, with the iBoost, there's no app. Um, so you had to go in and um, and 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 press buttons on the device, um, which made it a harder setup. With the app, it's a very easy setup on here. If you want to add boost timers and things like that, you can do a seven-day uh, timer. So you can have things happening at different times uh, on every day of the week if you want. Um, also, because it's using the Harvey, use no more batteries to change. Not that I ever had to change the batteries, but at some point I would have had to change the batteries in the unit uh, for the um, uh, solar eye boost that sits in the consumer unit to detect the generation. So there's a little bit of a plus there. And actually, before I even completed this video, um, I advertised the solar eye boost for sale um, on one of my local forums and it sold within about an hour. Um, so um, I did make a little bit of money back uh, from this whole adventure uh, from that. So, uh, you know, there's something there. So it hasn't cost me uh, as much it, as, it, as it otherwise would have, but certainly there's still a few hundred pound outlay, um, which ultimately probably uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to do, but I was quite excited by this product and the app and uh, just having everything in my home, um, you know, in one place where I can see it. So, um, you know, I, I, I like it, but I don't think it's going to be for everyone, um, especially if you're not bothered um, about those app features. Anyway, that's it. Um, I think... Uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, if you are attempting electrical work, then just make sure that you are competent. Uh, make sure that you have a friendly electrician who you can ask advice of um, it before attempting it. And for the jobs that you are able to do yourselves, then get them to do it. Um, but as far as from my experience, they're always happy for you to run cables and do things like that, um, and um, you know save them the bother because actually they're electricians; they don't really like running cables. So um, you know, but don't do anything you're not you're you're not uh, at all comfortable with doing because um, you can burn your house down or kill yourself. So um, it's quite dangerous um, if you don't know uh, what you're doing, and you also need. Um, the right tools. So that said, I shall see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and all of that jazz. Um, yeah, see you in the next one.